We've been going through the 21st century Moses series. Last week, we learned about who real Moses was. We learned some shocking stories, shocking、uh, background about Moses. When he was about 80 years old, we might think like he, was, he already、um, had a great leadership skill and he was equipped with a lot of things, a lot of materials, but that was not the truth because he had nothing in his pocket. And、uh, he was saying, Who am I? Meaning that he was nobody. However, God is who I, I am, who I am. Almighty God, all powerful God, all the transcending, all the time, He is everlasting God. And He is not just being,、uh, He is not there far away from Moses, but He said, I will be with you. So God was present with Moses. Because of God's power, God's presence, Moses was who He was, and Moses was used by God in a powerful way. Now, today, as the second Um, second time for this 21st century Moses series, I want us to look at a little bit of a younger Moses, and we can know more about him more about him in Hebrews chapter、uh, 11. That's a hall of faith, as you might know. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 20,、uh, 24 through、uh, 25. So we'll see、uh, what kind of Moses he was. Now, this is a younger Moses, and some people might say, you know, Moses met God for the first time in the、uh, burning bush.、Uh, yes, it is true, but does that mean that he didn't have any faith at all? Well, that was not the case. So let's look at today's passage together.、Um, and it says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. There are three points I want to make from today's passage. The first one is faith, second one is identity, third one is community. So, this is what made Moses to be Moses, right? So, first of all, he had a faith, and second, he had a Identity, and we'll see in just a few minutes that how his identity was、uh, not really changed, but how he regarded his identity differently than he used to. And then, number three is the community what kind of community he chose to be with. So, let's go back to today's passage again. It says, By faith, Moses. So, it really starts with faith. As I mentioned, Hebrews chapter 11 is a hall of faith. We will see the bunch of list of people, men and women of God, who had faith. So, faith is the first beginning. But what is faith? Now, the first part of this chapter defines what faith is. So, let's look at that. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 2, it says, Now, faith is the assurance of things. Hope for. Now, when you say you hope something, like I hope, I hope for a better future, I hope for a wonderful marriage, and I mean, those are already great things. However, we're not really sure about what the future would be like. We don't, we're not sure about what the future marriage would be like. But here we see that faith is not only hoping something, but you are assured of that. You are assured of what you are hoping for. How is it possible? Because faith is really coming from this hope for what? Hope for God's promise. So, for example, we have the promise that Jesus is coming back, right? So, that is not just a hope, it is,、um, it is the fact、uh, because God, it's God's promise, and God is faithful, and we know that He will fulfill that promise. So, we are assured. Of his promise to be fulfilled. That is faith. Yes, we hope for God's promise to be done, and we are sure, we are、uh, certain about that promise to be fulfilled. And then also it says, conviction of the things not seen. So faith is something that you have not seen, but you are convicted about that. So have you seen Jesus? Probably not, because you are. You know,、uh, you were born probably later than me or before me, but it doesn't matter. You know, I never seen Jesus because I'm 48, 48 years old, but never seen him because he was born and he died and rose、um, at least 2,000 years ago. 
So none of us who are whoever watch whoever watching this YouTube or listening to the podcast have not seen Jesus. But you are listening to this message uh, because you already believe in Jesus or you want to believe in Jesus. So if you believe in Jesus, even though you have not seen Jesus yet, you have conviction that He is true and He is truly our God, Lord, and Savior. So that is faith. So faith is act is really assurance. It's a certainty, and it is the conviction that even if you have not seen him, even if you have not really uh, touched it, but you hope for, or you are sure about it, and you are convicted by that, and with it, that is what faith is. So let's go back to uh, to this passage again by faith, Moses. Now, by the way, um, I kind of I uh, brought it up, brought up about the, uh, some point that was this young Moses or old Moses after he met the uh, God in the burning bush? No, according to uh, Hebrews chapter eleven, this was the young Moses. Probably he was about forty years old, and uh, he had a faith. We don't know how he uh, had faith. Probably. Um, the, uh, his mother, uh, when he was a babysitting, when she was babysitting, probably she told the story of God. We don't know. We all, uh, it, it's not shown there. But the thing is, the Hebrew, the author of the Hebrew clearly says Moses had faith. So Moses had this hope about God, and he was assured about it. And then he had a conviction about God's existence. So that's what we can see. So by faith, by faith. When he had grown up, so this is the second thing that we need to look at. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Because he was called Moses. Moses being made, it means that drawn, uh, drawn from the water. So his name was given by Pharaoh's daughter. So Pharaoh's daughter is surely a mother to Moses, and that means Moses is. Son of Pharaoh's daughter, the princess of Egypt. So she, I mean, he was the prince of Egypt. So that was his identity, first identity, right? However, Moses refused that. So even though he was still the son of Pharaoh's daughter, but he refused that identity. That means he had another identity. So we don't know what identity it was, but we can assume that he knew that he was a Hebrew, right? And uh, he probably uh, knew that his the his people, the Hebrew people, were special or chosen people of God. So probably he identified himself with this people of God, Israelites. Okay. So because of this faith, it led to this. Identity, he chose to be called as Hebrew. He chose to be um, rather to be called as the uh, um, the people of God. Okay, so that we see that uh, this uh, identity, uh, it's it maybe the identity crisis that he was going through, but he chose to be uh, this way. And then, what next? In verse twenty-five, it says, "Choosing." Rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God, so he chose to be with the people of God. So he chose the community, community of God's people. So you see what's going on here. That uh, even uh, then to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So I mean, he could he could stay there. He could stay in the palace of Egypt, and because Egypt was the mightiest kingdom uh, at the time, and then probably they, they had, there was a enrichment of culture, and they had a huge influence on other countries. So he could enjoy all the luxuries and all the great things of Egypt. However, he did not choose it. He chose rather to suffer. Isn't that interesting? Suffer ill treatment. Four hundred thirty years. These people of God, people of Egypt,、uh, people, the Israelites were suffering. Two million people were suffering together. However,、uh, Moses. He kind of lay down. He lay down his all the luxuries and all his identity, and he chose to be with God's people, even though they were suffering. So it is all coming down from what. Faith, because of his faith in in God, he changed his identity. 
uh, he recognizes other identity which was not so pleasing to the human in the human perspective, but he rather chose the community of God, even though they were suffering um, very hard. So we see the uh, Moses had these three elements here: faith, identity, and community. Because of faith in God, he chose his uh, right identity. Um, not as the uh, simple, the uh, luxurious life or the uh, king or king's son, but he chose to be the people of God and he chose to be with the people of God, which is the third one, community. So what I see from here is a very healthy and the three major elements to be the 21st century Moses. Now, if you want to become 21st century Moses, then definitely, first of all, you need to have this faith, faith in God, faith in Christ Jesus. Without this, we cannot please God. Without faith in God, you are not even saved. Why? Because John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that who, uh, uh, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, ever, but have everlasting life. That means without that faith, without belief in Christ Jesus, then you are not saved. You can, you are, your sins are still there and you will be punished forever in hell. So it always start with faith. But when you have truly your faith, then the, tr the true faith in Christ Jesus will, will, uh, remind you of your true identity. Probably you might have a different identities, like you're a student and you're a policeman, or you are one, you are um, mom and your father, you are salaryman. So you might have a lot of lot of um, wonderful identities, and uh, that's great. And also you might have a different identities too, like oh, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I'm a very smart, I'm handsome, and or you might have a different idea about yourself. Like I'm so ugly, I'm not, I'm not uh, welcomed, and I'm nobody. I have, um, I'm a in in uh, I'm very very isolated person, so nobody really cares cares about me. So you might have all these kind of different identities. No matter what identities you have, now you have a new identity. What is it? If you look at First Corinthians, no, Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse seventeen. You see the amazing uh, the identity. You are new creation. New creation. If you are in Christ Jesus, all things have passed and new have come. So no matter what identities you have had so far, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are new creation. God has created you in a fully different way because you were a sinner, you were sinful, but Christ washed your sin because of his death on the cross and because of his resurrection. You are born again through his spirit who lives in you you are a new person you are his temple you are his child as in john chapter 1 12 for those who received him god jesus gave him them to be the children of god so you are child of god but also a few verses down same same chapter verse 20 it says you are ambassador you are ambassador for Christ. That means you represent Christ Jesus wherever you go. So you have this wonderful one, two identities, new creation and ambassadors for Christ Jesus. That is your identity. So what amazing, amazing identity that you and I have in Christ Jesus. Now, because of faith, this new identity, we have this new ID, right? But that is not the that is not the end because when you have this faith, when you have this identity, uh, what next is that will lead us to the community. What kind of community uh, am I talking about? First of all, the people of God. Remember, Moses chose to suffer with the people of God. Even though they were suffering, Moses belonged to this people of God. Likewise, we have the people of God, people of Christ Jesus, the body of Christ Jesus. What's that? It is the church. Church is the community. Um, it is, that is the one singular body of Christ Jesus that uh, you, if you're a Christian, then you belong to the church. So uh, you can be an arm, you can be a feet, and you can be a leg, uh, whatever part it is, you are 
the church you are a church and Christ Jesus is the head of the church he is your shepherd and he is your head so first of all we need to choose to be with this church so let's say if you are watching this YouTube and that's all that you do that you're not uh, going to any church on Sunday or any day then that's the problem because uh, you're missing the huge thing. Maybe you don't really have the identity as a Christian. Maybe you don't have a faith. That's why you're not in, involved in the church. So you need to look at what this really means. That if you truly have a faith, then that will lead you to have a new identity. And that will lead you to have choose this people of God, the community of God. But at the same time, when you are with the people of God, then you are going to choose another identity another community not to i don't say not to have fun with them or not to belong to them but to reach out to them what is that community it's a non-believers that christ jesus gave us this great commission great commission to go and make disciples of all nations so we need to go to non-believers and we need to share the gospel with them even though it's very very difficult it's hard but rather we need to choose to uh, be with them to share the love of christ jesus now remember we have to be very careful about how we need to how should we live because Moses was carefully choosing his identity and community I mean he didn't have to do it but because of his faith he refused to be called as the son of Pharaoh's daughter and also he uh, chose rather to suffer with the people of God rather than uh, enjoying his pleasure of uh, in the palace likewise um, probably you might have a very strong identity, great identity that everyone was respecting to or everyone was desiring to have. Or you have a community that you, you have a f so much fun with. But if you truly have faith in Christ Jesus, then that will change. Because, uh, yes, you can, you can be in, the, uh, in all the uh, um, wonderful funs and entertainment. Uh, however, if you have Christ Jesus in you, then you would rather choose to live as the sons and daughters of God. Uh, because you are a child of God, you are the new creation. And the second, you will live as the ambassador for Christ Jesus. You want to represent Christ, not representing the sinful world, sinful people around you, but you want to represent who Christ Jesus is. And then, now if you are in uh, in the United States or different countries, then probably you might have a American dream that you wanted to have a, a perfect life and a beautiful and a wonderful life in this new country. However, you have the community that you need to choose. What is that community? It's the people of God. Even if it's a very difficult, um, choose the people of God and also choose to reach out to the people who need the gospel of Christ Jesus. American dream is not coming from the Lord. If uh, Moses was all about American dream, he did not have to choose that identity. He did not have to choose that community. But all because of faith, he thwarted all the American dream he could have. But he rather chose people of God. He rather chose to be called as a Hebrew. So likewise, let's jettison the American dream and let's go back to the faith in Christ Jesus. But also, we have to think about this. Hmm. Was Moses perfect? No. Even though he had faith, he had identity, and he chose community, but it didn't go really well as he was expecting because what did he do when he was about 40 years old? I mean, he had all the right things in his mind. However, he killed a person. And then he fled to Midian, and then he spent 40 years uh, almost gaining nothing for him. And uh, the, if, you don't, if, you, if you have not watched the video about this Midian story, uh, the mid-40 years of life of Moses. You can watch the previous sermon uh, from last week because I unpacked it, unpacked what kind of life he lived. Literally, to make a long story short, he lived a very, very uh, humiliating immigrant or refugee life. However, you know the story, uh, the rest of the story that God revealed himself to Moses and then you know Moses was used by God in a mighty way. So going back to the, uh, my point, so for 40 years of age, I mean, he was he had a high potential and uh, he had faith. He had a identity and uh, he chose to suffer with God, uh, suffer with the people of God. 
However, just because you have all of these things doesn't mean that you are uh, used by God right away. Probably not. Probably so. God could definitely use you uh, when you're a young age. And we're going to look at uh, that uh, next week because we're going to study about Joseph. So, however, however, you must be you must be called by God and you must be empowered by Him and uh, God must be with you to be present with you uh, so that you would be used by God. So, yes, but still, faith is the starting point. You must have faith and that will lead you to choose your true identity in Christ Jesus and choose to uh, choose the true community in God, with, uh, in, in Christ Jesus. So remember these three elements and then be used by God as 21st century Moses for his kingdom, for his glory. And then wait, wait for the Lord to empower you and Lord to be uh, present with you for his kingdom, for his righteousness. But wherever you are right now, and go and make disciples of all nations, trusting him. Because Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20, that go and make the disciple, he, his authority, he has all the authority, and he is going to be with us forever. So he has the power, he has the presence, so that uh, we, by trusting in him, uh, as I mentioned that, uh, as the Hebrew chapter 11, verses 1 through 2 says, it's assurance, it's a conviction, so that the faith is what we um, based, what we based upon who God is, what He has done, not based on who we are and what we have done. So let's continue to believe in the Lord and let's see how the Lord uses us in His power for His kingdom, for His glory. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for teaching us through Moses' example. Father, please, if there's anybody who, who are uh, listening to this message who have, don't have any faith in you, I pray that your Holy Spirit would reveal yourself to them so that they will have a true faith in you, so that they will have a true identity in you, and then they will be able to choose the community that you have prepared to be prepared for them to belong to. So Father, I pray that 21st century Moses would have this all three elements so that we would be used by God, but by you, as you empower us, as you are with us, as we go and uh, make disciples of all nations, Lord. We thank you, praise you, in Jesus' holy name I pray, amen.